What's up you guys? Welcome to today's video. So I have not put on full face of makeup in a very, very long time. I'm not the kind of person who would wear like a full face all the time every single day, but I would wear foundation or like a tinted moisturizer and do something with my eyes and maybe a little blush or whatever. But since we started wearing masks, I am not wearing face makeup to work because that seems like a waste because literally all you can see is this <laughs> so i've just been doing eye makeup like in the past week or two i've been like wow i really miss getting full glam and having that be a fun thing so i decided that i wanted to do that today and i figured why not do it and sit down and chat about life with you guys for a little bit so whenever i do my makeup i always start with my eyes so i'm gonna get into that but I feel like it's been a while since I posted anything. I know I recently posted a video. I feel like just so much has happened. I haven't shared much about life recently. And as all of you know, in your own lives, things are a little bit different than they've been in the past. And so I went back to work June 2nd after being off. For me, it was actually like almost 11 weeks because I was supposed to be on vacation when we shut down. Before I keep going, I'll try to show you the products that I'm using, just so you know. And I will also link all the products down below. It was kind of a crazy whirlwind of getting back into work. There was actually a possibility that I wasn't gonna be going back to work because of our move. We thought that maybe potentially if things turned around, we would be able to go and it would be better for me to just be off and kind of prepare for that, but obviously that didn't happen. So I went back to work and the week before I went back, I went in and kind of rescheduled a lot of clients that were on my books prior to us being closed, like in that 10 week time frame, I had some clients that were supposed to come in, obviously. And so I rescheduled them and then started reaching out to like all my other clients. That went really well. I was able to book a lot of people. My first four weeks were booked solid. And while that was amazing, it was unbelievably tiring. I have never had that many clients in a week in my life. And so to go from doing absolutely nothing for two and a half months to being the busiest I've ever been for a whole month long. It was like absolutely insane. I kind of mentioned in my last video that I fell off the working out train and that's wise because I was only working 25 to 27 hours a week, but you know, I went from doing nothing for two whole months, not working, not having that routine to working full throttle every single day for five or six hours a day. It was great. And I am honestly so thankful that that's how it was, obviously for like financial reasons, that is great. But also just like, I've never had that experience as a stylist. So to be able to have that experience and be like, whoa, like this could be my every single day someday was kind of really cool to feel and see. And I do really look forward to when that is a reality for me. Don't know how long that will be from now. Obviously when we move, it'll take some time to build up a clientele, but I am looking forward to someday when I can be busy all the time. It was a lot of fun to just be back. One thing that kind of stunk though, was when we first opened, we weren't doing blow dries. You know, you would do this balayage for hours and then you couldn't blow dry it to see what it looked like. And that is just so frustrating. And it was all clients basically that I had done in the past. So I wasn't like, oh, I'm like really not sure about how this looks. Like I had built a trust with those clients. So I knew that if something wasn't right, they were gonna tell me. It's just such a frustrating thing to spend so many hours on someone's hair and then not be able to see it. We, for about a month, were doing that, which it also allowed us more time to take clients because a blow dry can take at least a half an hour or less than depending on the client and the amount of hair that they 
have, but it freed us up to do more, which was awesome. So yeah, that part of it was good and bad because you miss out on seeing your client's hair, but we were able to take more clients, which I think at the time was more important. Once we hit phase four, about a month after we opened was when we started blow drying again. I feel like it was pretty easy to get back into the routine of blow drying and taking that extra time. It was just so satisfying the first time I did a color and then I got to blow dry it and see it. It was so good. So yeah, just crazy going back to work. Obviously a thing that we never thought would ever happen, but it did. Things have kind of slowed down a little bit for me now at work. I feel like a lot of my clients personally are balayages, highlights, stuff like that. I don't have a lot of every six to eight week clients. That's the clientele that I prefer is like the blending services anyways. But once I get all of those clients in, they're not gonna come see me again for another six months to a year. So things have definitely slowed. I know that this week is kind of slow for some of the other girls too. So it's not like just me. So anyways, that's kind of just what's been going on with me and work. Us going back to work has gone really, really well. For the most part, I feel like everything went really smooth when we came back and um, people weren't too fussy about things. So that has also been really good. Um, I wanna talk about this palette for a second. I really like it. I've used it a lot before, but I have a hard time picking a shade for like my inner lid because all of the glittery colors are really, really um, yellowy and vibrant. So I'm pretty sure every time I'm like, oh, I think that color will work. And then I go over it with a matte color again and get rid of all the glitter. <laughs> I have not been buying makeup because I haven't been doing my makeup, but I feel like once ColourPop came back after being shut down. They've released some stuff that I would like to try, but I'm like really hesitant to spend my money because I don't want it to just sit there and go bad. I don't want to buy a bunch of makeup and then be like, oh, well, I'm actually not going to use it. I want to buy, but I really don't have a reason to right now, which stinks. So my lashes are pretty long naturally, and when I put this on, they're even longer. And I tend to get that little like speckly mascara look, but I will wipe that off in a bit when it's dried down. I actually have a new product that I'm trying. I got a sample of from Sephora and I've had it for probably a couple months now, but it's the Vitamin Glow by Smashbox and it is a primer. So I'm gonna try it. I think I maybe put a little too much of this on, but that's okay. We'll just let it, let it really get in there. You know what it also kind of smells like? This is nasty. It does smell vitamin C-ish. It kind of smells like Flarp. And I don't know who of you out there have ever played with Flarp, but it's like this little tube that has this like slimy sticky stuff in it and you like make farting noises with it. That's literally all it is. But that's kind of what it smells like. It As it's drying, I don't really smell it anymore, but that's what it smells like. <laughs> I'm mixing the two foundations that I have together. So I wanted to share something with you guys that obviously you guys know that I'm fairly comfortable with sharing my medical history on the internet. And I wanted to share it mostly because it kind of relates to my work life. So I actually filmed a whole video on this and I filmed it when I had a doctor's appointment right before I was going back to work. Okay, so my uh, camera stopped recording, so that's fun. I don't know what the last thing you heard was, I'm putting foundation on and I'm telling you a story. I had a doctor's appointment and I was filming it because I was like, well, I'm sure not a lot of people are going to the doctor right now. So I'll like show what it's like. So I started a new birth control and I noticed that I was losing a lot of hair, like a lot of hair for me, which I know is different for other people, but I started to lose kind of an intense amount of hair on the daily, but then like in the shower, like, almost 
golf ball size amounts of hair. So it got to the point where I was like, okay, something is not right here. And I had started this birth control like probably three or four months before this started happening. So I was like, I should probably get it checked. Best to be safe. I mean, I know hormones can change how your hair grows and falls and all of that. So I wasn't too concerned, but I know that it can also be due to thyroid issues. Hair falling out can be due to blood loss and iron deficiencies and anemia and stuff like that. So I went and I had my blood work done at the hospital. I went to my gynecologist because I was initially assuming that this was related to my birth control that I had just started. Then about a week later, the test came back. I was not anemic, but my iron ferritin was low, which I don't know exactly what that means, but part of my iron was low. My doctor recommended that I start taking an iron supplement. Everything else looked really good, so she wasn't concerned about like my thyroid or anything. I started taking an iron supplement and a B12 supplement that was hopefully going to help. Now my iron, this was not directly an issue of this birth control that I had started. My iron was low because at that point I was spotting every single day for about five months and in my head i don't know why something about that seemed okay and you know obviously i'm used to gynecological issues so in my head it was never a super severe thought in my mind that like oh this could be really really bad that i'm like losing blood every single day with my history i was like my body's probably just adjusting to my birth control so I had changed some things with my birth control so that I would hopefully stop spotting every day. And then I started this iron supplement with the B12. So I took that for about eight weeks and my hair went from being like golf ball size amounts when I was in the shower to pea size ball in the shower, which I can't tell you how sad I felt losing hair because I'm a hairstylist. You guys, I don't know what the situation is with my camera today, but it doesn't want to keep recording. So this story is probably gonna be all over the place, but basically I went back to my doctor and had my blood work retested and everything's fine now. My hair has definitely stopped falling out. The spotting has stopped because of the actions I took with my birth control. My hair is fine. I am so thankful. I just always recommend that if you are having an issue with your skin or with your hair or with your scalp, that obviously give it a little bit of time to see if anything resolves, but your skin and your hair are kind of the first things to give you a signal that something is happening internally. So it's really, really important when you notice those things to either just call your doctor and say, hey, what do I need to do? Or make an appointment or schedule blood work or something because it's usually a sign that something deeper is going on. As I always recommend, if you think you're having an issue, go see a doctor. Don't put it off and find a doctor that you feel like will listen to you and hear your symptoms and hear you out because it's so, important. So my hair was falling out and I thought I was going to go bald, but it's, it's all good. Anyways, moving on. So I have my base on, I put my concealer on, moving right along here to the rest of my face. It'll be fun editing this and seeing how many times I said the same thing over and over again because my camera died. It didn't even die, it just like stops recording, which I've had an issue with that in the past, but I don't know why it does it. I just realized that I really have not been showing you the products that I've been using. I'm still gonna link everything down below, all the things that I used, unless they are no longer available, which I know that the bronzer that I just used does not exist anymore. I'm very sorry. It's the only bronzer that I have and the only bronzer that I've ever used. I brought a few lip options. I don't wanna wear anything super heavy because it's summer. I'll show you this. This is a Just A Tint a Lip Crayon from ColourPop. I'm actually gonna go do my hair really quick for some fun too and I will check back in with you when everything's all 
complete. All right, you guys, well, my hair is finished, nice and curled. I put a little braid in for some fun. Um, I realized that I didn't spray any setting spray, so I'm gonna do that really quick. I'm gonna use the All Nighter by Urban Decay. I'm not gonna lie. I uh, got very warm and kind of sweaty while I was doing my hair. And I honestly think this makeup held up pretty well. Like I was literally sitting here doing my hair, taking my beauty blender and like dabbing the sweat off my face. I'm very warm. <laughs> this is the look all finished. Uh, I really love honestly how it turned out. It's like a little glam but not crazy i think that's all i have for today's video i really hope you guys enjoyed this if you have any suggestions of anything that you would like to see whether it's anything makeup hair or just my life i would love to hear about it in the comments below be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already it really means a lot to me and if you want to be notified when i upload new videos be sure to hit the bell icon as well and i will see you in my next one bye guys